I thought today I'd have a little check-in a bit earlier because I've got a long day um, and I have to go to a conference about sugar. And it prompted me because this morning when we were doing our live for exercise, I always start with a little chat. We do it on Instagram. And I got talking about sugar and, and there's, there's a tremendous amount of identification. I just thought what I'd love to do is start the conversation today about your relationship with sugar. And the reason sugar is really important to talk about is that when we get to an age of being perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopause, sugar has a far more damaging effect on our body. And I have had a very, very addictive relationship with sugar throughout my life. And I'm just gonna tell you the history of my relationship with sugar. So I, I remember I went to boarding school um, when I was very naughty, six and a half, chopped the girls plat off at school, sent home by my parents. The dad, dad was there with Frank Lauder, who wrote the St. Trinians, and they named me Trini as a result of that incident. Um, and I was sent to boarding school very young. Now, at boarding school, I soon was living abroad. And so when I went to school, I'm doing BFF now. When I went to school, I had very nice stationery because I lived in Germany. I had great stationery. Stationery was the currency at boarding school. So I would take the stationery and I would swap it for, for, for sugar, for sweets, because I was addicted to sweets. And at this school, I, I hold the school to blame for a lot of things. But one thing is they allowed you three sweets on a Wednesday, four on a Saturday and two on a Sunday, and that was it. So having been deprived of it, I wanted it so much more. And I did anything to have the bloody sugar. You know, I would trade everything. I would, I would do a lot of stuff. Um, to try and get sugar. So my um, relationship started off on this level where I had to have it beyond anything else. And it's a very addictive behavior, that behavior I had, which when I was a grown up manifest itself in different ways. But once I began to understand the concept of addiction when I was 26 and filling that hole, it gave me a handle on things, but I had to primarily deal with addictions that were going to kill me. And after a few years, you know, I, I also have led a more healthy lifestyle. But at that time, you know, I was in my 20s and, and teens and 20s and I could just about do anything, you know, it just wouldn't affect me. My body was young. It was still kind of blossoming and forming and it wouldn't, it didn't have any damaging effects. Now, in my 30s and 40s, I was relatively healthy, but I still love sugar. I love chocolate. I love ice creams. I love candy bars. I loved Kit Kats, all these things, which I still love, by the way. Um, and so I'm talking about super refined sugar. And then other sugars, healthy sugars, you know, honey and whatever. I wouldn't even consider that a sugar in those kind of days. So I then um, <clears throat> begun to notice when I went into menopause that sugar had this very inflammatory effect on me. And maybe also I had about four or five experts from America who were to me, really ahead of the game in looking and treating menopause. And they talked a lot about how important it was to remove sugar. And when I talk about sugars, I'm not talking about bits of fruit, I'm talking about refined sugar from refined sugar and those very acidic sugars from your life. Because, you know, when you get perimenopausal, there's many things your body can't take. And one of them it can't take so well is sugar. So it's a trigger. So sugar gives you a high, it will give you a bigger low when you're perimenopausal menopausal. It can inflame a bit when you're perimenopausal menopausal. It inflames you five times the amount. So there is lots of evidence on that point. Now, we can look at sugar and sometimes because of how we look at it, it makes it harder to stop having it. And it's like, it's a treat. And then I'm not going to give myself a treat or, you know, but I really love it and other things like dark chocolate take so boring. So there's all those arguments, but I want you to kind of write down after I've done this live about your relationship with sugar, because this is the beginning of our chat about sugar, all right? And it can also be that kind of toxic thing. You know, you can look at it as something that's poison, because if we were to do research in 20 years time and look at the effects on our bodies of refined sugar and smoking, I don't think there'd be a huge difference because it just affects our bodies in different ways. Um, that's my thought. It's not based on any scientific evidence, but it's just based on talking to quite a few scientists who feel that. So I just want to 
understand how you feel about sugar. And with sugar, you know, we're talking about wine, that's sugar. Um, maybe less so tequila. I think that has less sugar, I'm not sure. But, you know, on a very superficial level, yes, Heidi, sugar does age our skin, but it's more what it does to our mood as well. It's the high and low. It's that change in your, um, in your sugars and it really affects how you feel about yourself. And I notice that tremendously. Um, when you go to fill the hole with sugar, sometimes there's a feeling afterwards of dissatisfaction or it hasn't filled a hole. And then you have to think, why can you think of this concept of filling the hole a little bit differently? Um, I love you, sugar. No, um, uh, I know. The thing is, we can all love it so much. Um, arthritis, there's definitely a link with arthritis and sugar. I know that for a fact because my husband had arthritis and anything which was acidic or sugary was really bad for him from tomatoes to refined sugars. Um, but let's just get talking about it. That's literally what I want to do is start a conversation and it could be that you have the secret sugar hell that you're in. Share it here, you know, but I would like us as a collective of people to think about how much sugar we have in our life and how much healthier we might be if we can reduce it. Um, and I just feel that it's not about weight here. And I want to make that really, really clear because when something you associate with, well, I'm not losing weight, so therefore I'll have sugar again, you've got to look at it, if you can, heavier than that because it is going to actually, you know, be damaging your body a lot more than just putting on weight, perhaps. Um, and Karen, I know the reward with sweets. I had the reward with sweets. I had the deprivation with no sweets. You know, there's this real thing of how it, how it has a relationship with us and how ingrained that is when we're a child. Teresa, sugar in supermarket milk versus doorstep milk, higher in supermarket supplies. Um, Francis, I read, I read Sarah Wilson's I Quit Sugar and have adapted many of her principles. It's, I've given up sugar in the main and I feel great, great for your skin. I think I should find out who Sarah Wilson is, Francis. Thank you so much. Um, Sinead, I'm really filling a gap eating sugar. Lots, I lost loved ones and separated from a toxic relationship and keep trying to stop, but definitely addicted. It is that thing. I think it's the most immediate comfort thing. Some people, you know, comfort food, I feel is, is more generally sweet and savory. It might not be. Some people might say, oh, but my comfort food is cheese or it's comfort food, something else. But I do think that sugar does that. And we can also consider this thing of keeping a sugar diary. All right. So when you're having the sugar, just notice your mood. Notice, you know, I know for me when I have sugar, I will literally, when I have high refined sugar, I'll feel my body swelling. I can feel it now because my, I'm so postmenopausal that I feel it. And when you get to a stage where you can physically feel the impact on your body, like I've noticed since I've stopped taking sugar so much, I don't swell up my ankles so much in the summer. And that I thought was just about water retention. But water retention has a huge relationship with sugar. So if you suffer from a lot of water retention, you have to really, I'm putting on Gaia, uh, golden glow. You have to really think about how much sugar are you having in your body? So these are little things, but I thought I might get a few experts on. Would you be interested for me to get a few experts on and educate us a little bit about sugar? Um, sugar is like crack, says Kathy. My kids and me always crave sugar after a meal. Hard to stop this. Really hard to stop that. It's, it's what can you substitute it with? Jane, the idea of sugar is always nicer than the reality. Only the first bit of chocolate hits the spot. It's like a cigarette. There's only six a day that you enjoy. Um, Emma, my God, I'm so addicted to sugar. It's not even funny. I feel like it would be easier to kick a heroin habit than get off sugar. Emma, I'm not going to take that lightly because it is a drug. You know, it's like I relate to the way the language you're using and what you're saying and the fact that it is something that is incredibly, you know, physically addictive. There is something I'm just going to say now that helped me in my journey of sugar. And I'm definitely not over. I'm not, you know, my journey is not finished. But I start to take chromium and chromium drops are drops that you can take um, and they kind of stop sugar cravings. So it is worth looking at them because they can help um, a little bit. 
Carol, can I remind people that simple carbohydrates, if not burn quickly, turn in sugar, and then it's stored in fat? Um, Carol, I agree. I think that getting into the stage of literally beginning to look at every aspect of a diet, uh, and when I say diet, I don't mean losing weight, I mean what you eat, is difficult. I mean, I just want to start with, let's say there's five levels of sugar. The first level is really refined sugar. Let's just talk about sweets and cakes and ice cream you know, that kind of sugar. Then there's kind of sugar in fruit. How do we think about that? Then there's things that turn to sugar in your body, like bread, when it's a white bread. I'm not talking about those second two. I'm literally going to start with the first. Harry O'Dependent, pepper bloody pigs. I mean, I always call them pepper pigs, but they're not called that. Percy pigs, aren't they? From m and I mean, Percy pigs. I had two bags a day in the office. All right, Percy pigs were like my, I'd see somebody, I was like a pig snorting towards their desk going, oh, can I have one? And then I literally held the bag in my hand and I was like this. And the only reason I didn't feel guilty is as a company, we provide food for all our team during the day. So we provide the Percy pigs. Now, I have talked also with the team about should we be eating healthier things? And we generally have changed a little bit what we help the team eat. Um, when we're buying food in the office for them. So we have kind of snack bars that are not too sweet and things like that. But, um, you know, we still have Percy Pigs. Uh, the repeated use of the word sugar here is just making me crave sugar. I'm so, so sorry, Karen. I know, Jean, I, jo jo Joanne, sorry. I've been struggling to remove sugar from my life for about five years. Sometimes I win and sometimes sugar creeps back in. Then I have to make a new strategy to overcome it again. Joanne, why don't we talk about how you feel when you have removed the sugar from your life, do you notice big differences? How old are you? What's the impact on you? Um, I'm good all day. Then after 9 p.m. it goes tits up. Joe, that's true. We can be lying in bed and we can just go, mm, 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 mm. I mean, it's, we've all been there. And last night, I think last night, what made me wake up this morning and have this conversation is I have dark sugar at night. And it's about 80%. And it, it took me a while to get used to it, but I like it. I have like two, 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 three bits of it at night all right and lila has these caramel bars and she got them from this very nice shop lovely shop but they're still caramel and i had some last night and i felt sick and i felt like my i felt it in my body i, f I felt the poison in my bloody body Natasha, I'm 45, so I'm getting close to my menopausal journey. But from when my periods began at 16, I know when I'm due on, as two days before I need a chalky fix, it's the same feeling as a pregnancy food craving. Interesting that. It'd be like interesting to understand the medical elements behind that behavior, wouldn't it? Irene, there are so many alternatives to refined sugar. I made delicious banana bread, tasted sweet, but no sugar in it. Great. Um, I think there's definitions of sugar, but I, I mean, I know what you're saying. It's like if you have a ton of refined sweets, just going to something like banana bread is a big step forward. Hannah, I stopped eating sugar about five months ago. I've lost 30 pounds and feel so much more energy. It's not easy at first. I mean, Hannah, that's an unbelievable story. Um, I'm not here today to say that stopping sugar is about weight. I can appreciate for you, you wanted to lose weight and that sugar was a big part perhaps of that weight loss journey, which is amazing, uh, a really inspiring story. Um, and I know I'm healthier without it after being on a strict diet, lapsing back into sugar. Jackie, yes, absolutely. I get a flare up with arthritis. If I have a lot of sugar, I would pay dearly with chronic pain. That's the thing, my joints ache now because, you know, we can be on estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. In fact, I forgot to do mine today. And it can make it, it can, help so much with menopausal systems but me menopausal symptoms but having um sorry i forgot to take it having sugar it's we've got to look at I, okay so what i want you to do all of those people who are feeling i'm taking way too much sugar i just would love you to start the sugar diary think when you take it really track your relationship with sugar because it's like when I look at spending because spending is another thing that you know compulsively spending for me I mean now it's not a great thing to talk about um I think I'm better at it though uh because the last few months I've really looked at it but um 
yeah, I had to keep it like a, a diary of what I actually spent because what we think we spend and what we spend is different. So the same applies to sugar. What we think we're eating and what we're really eating can be different. So keeping a diary, diary helps you consider how big is that addiction to sugar? And I think it's a really good thing to do. Um, Laurence, I'm so relatable. I found when I get stressed, I go for sugar. Francesca, I've been diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis and most mornings I wake up with aches and pains all over my body. But once I get going, the pains ease away during the day. That's very true, actually. Just movement of body can be so helpful for that. Amanda, I try and avoid bread, pasta, etc. As I always crave something sweet after I've eaten it. I mean, that's interesting, too, is which foods make us crave other foods. Now, and that's a really interesting one. Alison, this is now. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes because of perimenopause. Sugar and carbs are both issues for me, so diet has completely changed. Dark chocolate does become much nicer to eat. Alison, I mean, there you are with a medical situation which you, were, you knew for your health you had to give up sugar. So if we all felt we might get diabetes... Um, which is more prevalent when you're in menopause, perimenopause or menopausal, if it's type 2. Um, that's a big old thing to ask yourself as well. Jane. Morning, beautiful lady. I've cut most sugar out of my diet the past two weeks. I haven't been well. The difference is amazing. My tummy feels better. Bloating. Can we all talk about bloating, perimenopause, bloating, sugar, killer for bloating. We, I think most of you know that though. The difference is amazing. My tummy feels better. My head is clearer and my joints feel so much less painful. Sugar being a really bad inflammatory substance. I've also cut down massively on carbs and I'm cooking everything I eat from scratch. No ready meals and processed foods. Excitement of what I can achieve is now taking over from my craving for the evil that is sugar. Very nice story. Thank you for sharing. Um, Claire, I did a sugar-free diet for six months and I lost a stone in weight. Robin, ever since I've been putting on iron tablets, my cravings for sweets has gone. That's so interesting, Robin. That's so interesting. So there's lots here to chat. I'm, I'm, I've got to go now, but I want you all to leave your comments. And if you feel you've got a problem with sugar, leave it down here. Read some really inspiring stories that women have already left um, on, on this post. And let's see what we can do about sugar reduction in our life. Because I think once it becomes a medical issue, we need to really look at it. And if you are perimenopausal or menopausal, sugar to me is a medical issue.